Hello, it's great to see all of you. I see a lot of familiar faces here. So hello to old friends and new friends. And, uh, and I also see some artists whose work I'm gonna be featuring today. So that's exciting. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you guys could all join us today. I'm gonna jump right into my presentation here. Okay, so I have given uh, this lecture, International Quilt Trends at the Dairy Barn several times. So I'm just really happy that I have the opportunity to do this again, even though it's virtual, hopefully next time it'll be in person. But I imagine there are those of you who are here this time who would be able, to, uh, would not be able to make it in person. So uh, that's exciting too. I do want to ask you or suggest that you take notes because you're going to see a lot of ideas from all over the world. And I'm pretty sure there are some ideas that will be of interest to you as artists, uh, as curators, as teachers, and so on. And let's just start out by talking about something that we have lost. And that is the Tokyo Quilt Festival at the Tokyo Dome. The last one that occurred was January, 2020. <clears throat> we didn't know at the time that it was going to be the last one. I was there with my daughter and we were starting to feel the effects of the virus spreading throughout Asia while we were there. In fact, when we got on the plane, we kind of felt like it was chasing us out of town. Uh, so many people have asked, will the festival go on again? Well, it was canceled in 2021. What I have heard is it will not ever come back to the Tokyo Dome. So those days are gone, sadly. So for those of you who've been, you know, this is what you saw when you went into the baseball stadium. <clears throat> uh, but if it does return, it will return in a different venue. And we still have not heard word of that one way or the other. So that was a sad thing. However, uh, there were plenty of other virtual shows. So what I've done, you know, normally I go to these shows uh, as a sponsor and also I have a press pass and I go in before the show opens so I can photograph before the crowds come in. Uh, and I, I go to many different shows throughout the year, but of course this year I wasn't able to photograph anything. So most, I, you know, 90 some percent of these photos are screen captures. And uh, well, we'll just enjoy them together because it's better than nothing, right? <laughs> uh, Houston has added a youth category, which is absolutely thrilling to me. Uh, Birmingham and Tokyo and many other shows have had a youth category for many years. So we jumped in right away and said, we will sponsor the youth category uh, for this virtual festival. And this was the winner. This was a six-year-old little girl. She was inspired by uh, Gailene Fitzgerald's book, The Dream. And by the way, we are recording this. And one of the main reasons I want to record it is so you guys can go back and take a close look at these quilts. So we'll have that link available to you afterwards. So these are quilts that would have gone to Houston last fall. And I'm sure some of you went online and checked that out, but it's interesting just to see the work of the various artists. And of course, there's a broad range of categories. There are modern quilts, there are pictorial quilts, um, there are portraits, there are traditional quilts. Uh, I tend to focus more on the contemporary and modern quilts. But what I'm interested in are trends. So I went through all of the images and I pulled out the quilts that look, or at least at the time, looked fresh and new and different. And of course, trends are constantly evolving. Uh, if you remember what modern quilts were 10 years ago, uh, modern quilts today are nothing like what they were back then, at least to me. So the modern quilts now have a very strong presence really at all of the major shows and, and many of the smaller regional shows too. And that's because there's so many modern quilt guilds all around the world now. So obviously it was a, an idea whose time had come. This is a miniature quilt with teeny tiny piecing, but take a look at the quilting. Look at how 
the patterning of the piecing is echoed out into the quilting in the solid blue border. So what I look for is quilts that are different from the norm. So what's different about this? You know, it's a square quilt, it's not a rectangle quilt, and that's something we'll talk about too. Instead of just making vertical rectangles of a particular uh, shape and size, we see a lot of experimentation in different shapes and sizes and maybe more horizontal work. Uh, Katie's work is always interesting. I've, I've really loved her exploration of the splash quilts over the last several years. And this was one that really caught my eye. So they're basically, they look like a paper collage except she has made them into a fabric collage. And as you can see, she paints, then she cuts them up and reassembles them into the composition and then translates it into a quilt. And I think that's a really effective way to play with pattern and color and basically to audition uh, color and design ideas. This really struck me as a modern quilt, uh, but it is inspired by a Chinese coin pattern. It's fun to see the experimentation and the exploration of color and spontaneous piecing that's occurring right now. This is inspired by the feathers of and fireworks of Carnival. This was the best of show, I believe. Karen Stone, Karen's been around for a long time. She's written many books and, and patterns. And uh, if you look closely, you'll see the little Trapunto dots uh, stitching in the leaves, which gives this kind of another layer of pleasing pattern. And, you know, one of the things that really makes us love the experience of looking at quilts is seeing one thing from a distance and then coming close and seeing a whole nother layer, layer of design and technique. So this would be a good example of that. <clears throat> Uh, Close-up floral images, of course, are always very popular in these shows. So here's a very effective, uh, beautiful rendition of water lilies. And you can see the, uh, the reflections of light on the surface of the pond there are very uh, complex. And Hiroko's work, uh, I'm sure if you've been to Houston, you've seen his work, and of course, there are always golden retrievers and cute little Asian kids. I have golden retrievers, so they always catch my eye, but also beautiful flowers and landscape. There is a whole series of quilts at the Houston online show by Tim Natar that were patchwork animal portraits. This was one that I thought was particularly engaging. Uh, one of the colors that I'm sure you have noticed I've been tracking is black and white and color. So there's black and white and red, black and white and pink, and then black and white and yellow and other colors. And then there's black and white and rainbow colors. So we'll see this as well. Here's a beautiful, very uh, three-dimensional effect of an animal portrait. You know, animal portraits continue to be so popular and I think it's because so many people are concerned about what's happening to the environment and endangered species. If you look within the body of the animal here, you can see floral fabrics that have been used and then thread painted over the top. And here's a different kind of animal portrait, completely paper pieced. You know, owls have been a very popular design motif. They've been, actually been a trend for several years. Uh, we see it in fabrics, but we also see it in quilts. And peacocks, the same thing. I think we have another quilt by this artist later on. 
Anastasia. But again, this is a quilt where you would have a different experience of it up close and personal. So we can only try to imagine what that would be like seeing it from a distance and then getting up close and seeing all the stitching detail on the feathers. Hmm. And I happen to really love this one by Sonia because I am a cellist and many of you know that I go up north and pho photograph the polar bears. Sonia is from Italy. And here's another amazing portrait by Linda Anderson. In fact, I have a couple pieces of her work. Uh, indigenous people and, you know, beautiful portraits of powerful women. And this one is rather wistful, isn't it? The grandma at her window doing her embroidery work. So Irene has really become a, a force, hasn't she? Uh, I've seen her work in person at Quilt National and in Houston and at QuiltCon, I believe all three of them. And she's a very popular teacher now. I know she was teaching at Pokey Bolton's uh, Napa online conference. I, I'm not sure what you call it this year. And her class is just sold out immediately. So she is a really hot artist these days. And we'll see some other quilts that I think are inspired by Irene's technique, perhaps. Uh, perhaps they're students or artists who are inspired by the same kind of spontaneous piecing. But then we also have, you know, those amazing traditional quilts that are very symmetrical and very perfect, but you just, even if that's not your bag, you still have to stand in front of them in awe and wonder. And this is one of those pieces. Linda Brown and Marilyn Badger, what a team. This is a miniature quilt and you have to admire the tiny, tiny stitching that makes the trapunto really pop out. And you know, when I, when I look at these quilts, I wanna try every technique. I wanna go back to my studio and just you know, like, wow, how'd she do that? Or how did he do that? I, I got to try that. So Colette is a Canadian artist and I met her several years ago in Canada. The very first year that she entered a quilt, she entered two quilts in the Canadian quilt exhibit. She won the best newcomer prize. And these are large quilts. They're, I don't know, six or seven feet across. They're large. And then with her other quilt, she won the best of show. So she just came from out of nowhere, kind of like Peter Byrne a uh, year before last when he won best machine quilted and best of show at QuiltCon. So Colette, um, I, I'm just particularly interested maybe because I know her story. She lives on a dairy farm. Her husband bought her a Bernina and uh, the design embroidery software. And she just went to town, learned how to use all of it and turned out awesome intricate quilts and she designs everything in the quilt. It's all original. Uh, so this is the artist who did the peacock quilt before. It has a, a very Celtic feel to it, right? With the Scottish thistles and the, the Celtic knots. This is inspired by the Book of Kells. And if any of you have ever had a chance to visit there um, in the Trinity Library in Dublin, they finally, you go through this amazing ancient library with all these illuminated manuscripts that were hand painted by monks. And then you go into the part of the museum that's the Book of Kells and every day they have one page that is being shown. <laughs> it's, it's a little tough, but I, I don't know how else they could do it. You can buy the book and see what all the rest of the pages look like. 12 yards of bias strip. And along those same lines, the art of heraldry. So there are a lot of symbols in this quilt that obviously mean a lot to the quilt maker.
Now here's an example of what I was talking about of different shapes. So it's taking a shape and just pushing it and pushing it and taking it as far as you can go without any boundaries or rules. Well, why not start with that, that shape and make it the, the shape of the actual quilt? And this actually has a three-dimensional quality to it as well, which is very interesting. So again, think about how you would see this quilt from a distance. I'm just trying to kind of recreate the experience we would have if we went to a show in person, because we're all missing that. Think about how you would experience this quilt from 10 feet away and from two feet away. And then take a close look in the lighter fabric areas and you'll see that a lot of those light fabrics are what they call low volume fabrics, where they have text in them like newspaper or calligraphy or um, other kind of printed matter that's been printed onto fabric and then cut up and pieced. And you wouldn't see that until you get close. Another trend that I've seen over all the last couple of years is the exploration of the idea of left brain and right brain. And of course, for creative people, that's something that we work with all the time, whether we're thinking about it or not. But I thought that these next two quilts were kind of uh, clever in the way that they address the subject. So this is Laura's version. And this is Marissa's version, brain overflow. I thought that was pretty funny. When your brain is overflowing, how does all of that extra, you know, we live in an age of so much stimulation and information. And we all know that pictures and quilts can say a thousand words with an image. And that's a lot of what we're doing today. Uh, those of us who are quilt artists, we're putting ideas into our artwork that maybe it's hard to say, or it's hard to express with words, but we can say it with an image, with color, with pattern, with design, with themes. And of course, one of the themes that we're gonna be thinking about over the next year is coming back together again. And this quilt was made specifically to express what it would feel like for all of us to come back together in person. So Houston is happening this year. Uh, I know because I'm a sponsor and I, I'm planning to be there. I hope that you will too. I hope that we'll all feel safe enough to go there. I suppose uh, we could have some unexpected turn of events with the virus that could change that. But right now we seem to be on track with getting together in person. And that's what this quilt is about too, but it's more abstract, it's more symbolic. And you'll see here that theme of black and white and color. And of course we were living in very polarized times, right? But life is not all black and white. There are shades of gray, there are mixes of black and white. And I think this quilt does a great job of expressing that. And that's what this is about too, except this goes back to 1989, the breaking down of the Berlin Wall. I just wanted to show you a few quilts. I remember this is still all online by Rachel Daisy Dodd. She makes quilts and blocks with what's called the pine burr method or technique. And you can see these are three dimensional little triangle pieces that have been sewn in concentric circles. Now, if you have a whole quilt that is completely made out of this, it weighs a ton. <laughs> I think somebody told me they had made an entire quilt out of this uh, pine burr method, the entire quilt as a medallion, just going out in concentric circles and the quilt weighed 40 pounds. So maybe that's not such a great idea. I don't know how you would hang that quilt. But uh, I just wanna show you some of her work. I'm so intrigued by this. One of these days I'm gonna work with this, this motif. And actually I learned about this first from the African American Quilt Guild here in Denver, the Washinaji group. One of the artists in that group works with the Pine Burr Block quite a bit and I was just so taken with it. 
And we'll see one more quilt by this artist uh, later in another show that I'm gonna share with you. Well, of course, one of the themes that we can't get away from that's going to be affecting us and we're gonna be talking about it and making art about it is you know, the year of COVID. And actually it's gonna be more than a year of COVID. I don't know, maybe it'll be two years of COVID. So this is a pretty stark um, image. When you first look at it, it looks like blood stains, and then you get closer and you see it's little corona shapes. And of course there's a message that you can read when you get closer. And social distancing, man, I am so ready to be done with that. <laughs> here, here at Equilter, we have been wearing masks and social distancing and disinfecting for way too long. When we finally got to the point where almost everybody was, uh, was vaccinated, we said, well, if you're two weeks past your vaccination, you can take off your mask and stop social distancing. And we did. And there were a lot of smiles and hugs. And there were people who we had hired during during COVID, during the pandemic, who we had never really seen their face. And so it, just think about that. All the people whose faces we're gonna see, I think that's going to be a, a theme in our work. It's something that's going to be affecting us emotionally and psychologically for quite a while. And of course, some of us feel weird about going out in public and not having a mask on. So there are a lot of layers, you know, this is going to be like peeling away the layers of the onion, coming back into society, coming back to normal, well, we're not gonna to return to the normal of before. So what is that new normal going to be? I wanted to share with you some of the delightful quilts from the India Quilt Festival. Um, I gave a presentation like this for them. Uh, I had to do it at midnight. <laughs> well, that was kind of exciting. I, I came over to the office in the middle of the night and spoke to these folks on the other side of the world but here are some of the beautiful quilts that they made. And of course they were very affected by COVID and they're still being affected by COVID. I mean, they didn't know how bad it was gonna get when, when they were making and sharing these quilts. This artist called this uh, modern hand embroidery. To me, it really looks like uh, Mayan embroidery. But it just as a reminder that, you know, the themes and the colors and the stitch work and the techniques often are being practiced by other artists and craftspeople on the other side of the world. You know, this art and craft that we share, uh, there are ideas that, that are so universal and we don't even realize it until we go and look at a quilt show on the other side of the planet. So Chitra is quite an accomplished and talented artist. I hope that I get to meet her someday. Uh, she had many beautiful pieces in the show. And these are Chitra's work as well. And you can see this is uh, public transportation in India. And you can see that just like here in the US, some people are wearing masks and some people are not. Uh, these are both by the same artist. So I, I haven't figured this out yet, but it seems to me that somebody must have gone to India and taught a workshop about how to do portraits because there are a lot of really beautiful portraits in this show. And these two are by the same artist. Really interesting, uh, different techniques used. The black background on this kind of abstract portrait on the right really captured me too. I love how the black really makes all the colors and the shapes stand out. And again, both of these by the same artist, Madhu. So 
So now we're going to move on to virtual QuiltCon. So right now they're planning in-person QuiltCon for Phoenix, Arizona for next year in February. And I hope that I'll see many of you there because I'm planning to go in person. I've got my hotel reservation. And by the way, if you don't have your hotel reservation, I'd jump on it because the impression that the organizers in Houston and I would imagine QuiltCon are having is that people are so desperate and anxious to go to an in-person event that uh, the, the hotels are gonna sell out quick. This was the best of show. So remember, this is we're still back in February of this year by Emily. I wish I could see it in person. Maybe I will. Maybe we'll see it on another show in person next year. And this is the other piece that she entered in the show. I thought that was quite an interesting comparison. So just have a look at that again. So she's, it looks like very spontaneous piecing, but the shapes are rounded as opposed to the more um, linear spontaneous piecing that we've seen in the past in the modern quilt guild. This was the People's Choice winner. It's a mad mid mod world. So this is mid century architecture. This was a group, the South Bay Modern Quilt Guild made this. So I imagine different person made each block and then they put it all together. But look at that amazing stitching that pulled the whole piece together. And so I, I found it really interesting that they were playing with kind of these uh, elongated diamond shaped blocks that were expressed through the quilting and then the uh, very contrasting kind of spiral or concentric circle quilting. But the colors and the architectural shapes are very consistent. So the public love this and, and I agree with them. It's a great quilt. Now remember at the first quilt con, the first one or two quilt cons, uh, there were very different kinds of quilts there, but then, you know, everybody had this kind of fixed opinion or idea of what a modern quilt was, but then we had a lot of creative artists who blasted that out of the water and brought us all kinds of very creative artistic quilts that we never would have imagined were modern quilts. So these are two portraits by Angela, and I believe the portrait on the left was her husband but it's a very interesting close-up where it only shows half of his face and then the stitching undulates out into the background, which it's not a solid black. If you look closely, again, this idea of when you get closer to a quilt, you see more and more details. Uh, it's actually a pieced background of different shades of, it looks like charcoal. You know, a lot of these details I've kind of had to guess, so you can guess along with me. And then, of course, the other close-up portrait on the right, which is a completely different feeling. And these are two portraits by two different artists, Sue Devani, who lives in Australia, and Sumi Paik, both using geometry, but in very different ways, right? However, of similar color palettes. So one of the things that you'll see here is the the color palette, you know, there are trends of colors that are expressed uh, very obviously through QuiltCon and the modern quilt guild. And here's a different kind of portrait making a statement. And one thing that we have come to expect from QuiltCon is that we have artist activists who make statements and often don't hold back in their imagery or their uh, the words that they put into their quilts. So there are a lot of issues that have been very difficult for us over the past several years, not just the past year. You know, we're living in a time that where we're very polarized and we, we need to find ways to talk to each other and so what does this say to you? You know, how, how could you stand in front of this quilt and strike, a, strike up a conversation with a stranger? I know that I've done that countless times at shows. And some of these simply have statements. Here is a quote by Frederick Douglass.
we've gone through a very difficult time in our history and there has been a lot of struggle for social justice and human rights. And of course, um, what's happening to the environment and endangered species and regulations on you know, toxic releases from industry. So there are a lot of these issues that are swirling around. There's a lot of conflict and polarity, but this is a way to bring up a topic and to get people to think about it. These are all last words, very poignant. So again, this would be a quilt that from a distance you might not really notice, or, and then you come up close, and often when you go to a show, you'll see a crowd of people standing around a quilt, and from a distance, you're like, well, what's the big deal? And then you get close and you realize it's not necessarily the artistry or the technique, it's the message of the quilt. And again, both quilts by the same artist. And these are large quilts. Here's a quilt that you definitely would not have an impact from a distance. You definitely need to get up close to experience the message. There are no beautiful surfaces without a terrible depth. And this is a self-portrait. Making a feminist statement. I didn't include the artist statement on these, so we'll just have to get the message from the images. This is a group quilt by a group that was making blocks of places they wish they could travel to during the pandemic. I thought that was pretty clever. At least that's what I recall when I read about this. Two quilts by the same artist. This may remind you of Irene Roderick's work, but it is by Carolina. Now I think Anne is on this, uh, on the, the call with us here. So Anne, I appreciate your work. It's beautiful and I love your choice of color. Two different artists, two different ways to work with these colors. Very different ways to work with these colors, right? And in particular, you know, if you look closely, I, I really hope that you guys are looking at this on a large screen. And if not, I invite you to go back and look at the recording of this on a larger screen and really check out the details because there are a lot of details in the stitching. Here we see two interpretations of the same color combination, purple and orange. And Annie's work also reminds me of Irene. Maybe I'll get to meet these artists and learn the story of their inspiration someday. That's what I'm missing, man. I really miss going to the shows and talking to the artists and hearing their stories. <clears throat> Big, bold graphic piece. And I, I find this, you know, this is kind of an extension of that black and white and color trend that I was mentioning. But here we have kind of mid-tone modern colors along with cool and warm grays. So it's not just black and white color. So think about all the different ways that you could contort and expand that black and white and color trend. And here's one of them. 
Now this, I, I did see the artist talking about this online. This was the first whole cloth quilt that I had seen at QuiltCon. And uh, Jody was, I can't remember where I saw her talking about this, writing about it online, but she said, you know, whole cloth modern quilt, why not? So she just went ahead and did it. I, I'm sure many of us would think, oh no, whole cloth quilt, you know, that's very traditional. But as she said, what the hex? <laughs> Go ahead and combine uh, different, different motifs and different techniques and make it modern. Two different artists two different approaches to city images. You can see in the image on the left, some railroad tracks and what looks like uh, electrical wires. And on the right, we've got a close up, but in positive negative. So I thought that was really clever how she did the positive negative. Well, here's a color trend, that acid green and how it was interpreted by two different artists. And this is the same artist and you can see that she's working with the same kind of uh, piecing that is put into curved blocks, but she has changed the shape and made it completely something new and then filled in the background with uh, stitching. So these, I, I believe she had three or four quilts on the show. You know, some of these artists are so prolific. I just had to choose like two out of the three or four quilts they entered into the show to show the, the variety of work. But here we have the same kind of uh, creativity with the block and the shape and the piecing. Two different interpretations of circles by two different artists. And again, similar color stories using circles, color and white and orange. Maria Schell is an artist who lives in Alaska. In fact, I'm going to be speaking to the Anchorage Quilt Guild when I go up there to photograph the grizzly bears the end of September. And I'm gonna meet up with Maria. So I'm looking forward to meeting her in person for the first time. Uh, you know, I was aware of Maria's work, but all of a sudden her work is everywhere. So you'll start to recognize her work. It's very distinctive. And her work has been in many different shows this year. So remember the artist who did the pine burr, the triangle set in concentric circles. This is the same artist, but here she has taken on a, a different uh, type of, well, it's, I, I call it a, a toothy wedding ring. <laughs> she calls it a tickle wish, but she has used a, a patchwork of a recycled denim. And recycled fabrics are definitely a trend out there as well. And this is the same artist and she sort of contorts and distorts shapes to create a new shape, a new image. And then of course, here is that idea of overlapping colors, creating the effect of transparency. And here she has echoed the shapes with the stitching. And notice the contrast of the concentric circle stitching with the horizontal uh, dense background stitching. And here's another big circle. Uh, Peter Byrne is that Canadian artist who I mentioned who entered QuiltCon for the first time a couple of years ago and won Best Machine Quilted and Best of Show, which kind of launched his career as a teacher, except then the pandemic shut everything else down. So I'm sure he'll be out there teaching and traveling as soon as things open up. Here's a lovely study of analogous colors. 
and value. And I also want to show you the group quilts. And again, it's just amazing to me the creativity that comes out in the group charity quilts. So each of the chapters make a group quilt. They put them together and then I guess they're raffled off to raise money. And they're given a theme and a color palette. So I have a selection here just to show you the, the range of creativity of what you can do with a color palette and a theme. And these quilts come from all over the world. But they are wildly creative, I'm sure you'll agree. Right, so this was the first time I've been able to attend the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival. I never traveled there in person, but I was able to attend online. And here is uh, the feature quilt by Elsie Campbell, who I know uh, she has been a fellow Bernina ambassador. She makes beautiful traditional medallion quilts. I've actually seen this quilt in a couple virtual exhibits uh, this year. It's a view, uh, it's an Alpine view. And I would say that Alpine and especially retro Alpine are trends as well. We see it in quilts and particularly in fabric right now. So this is a view of going up or going down on, on the, I guess you would be hopefully going up on a chairlift <laughs> up on a snow covered mountain. And of course, I live here in Boulder, Colorado, right next to the Rocky Mountains. So we have scenes like this, so I can appreciate uh, the image and the, the feeling of a snowy day like this. So Marilyn made two awesome art quilts here. Uh, she made a sort of Viking goddess quilt on the left. And on the right is a extremely detailed forest quilt, but if you look closely, and again, this is the, this idea of when you come close, you see other things. Do you see all the little troll or goblin faces down in the roots of the trees? <laughs> and here is that color trend that I was mentioning before, purple and orange. So, I don't know if you would call this a traditional quilt. It's just eye popping, isn't it? This one and the next one I'm gonna show you, they're, they're med medallion quilts, but the design and the color are anything but traditional. And this is a beautiful combination of purple and green. It's inspired by an artichoke. <laughs> Now here are two different takes on, they're, they're, what they have in common is they're both square and they both use shades of blue and orange, but of course, very different topics, but they're both scenic quilts. Now I have noticed that there are several horizontal landscape quilts. I'm seeing them in so many different shows. Some of them are painted, some of them are applique, but I'm gonna show you a few of them here. The desert is definitely a trend. I, I see a lot of quilts and fabrics that refer to these kind of desert scenes and sunset and cactus. Here's a very powerful silhouette image. And also a lot of landscape ocean quilts. Here's a young man enjoying himself at the beach. 
No shirt, no shoes, no problem. An image of a pier at sunset. Birds along the shore. And another pier. So it's always interesting just to see how these trends come up at shows and how artists have taken the same theme or subject matter and come up with similar or completely different quilts. Also, pop animal portraits seems to be a theme. And these are collages. So again, you would have a different experience from a distance and coming up close. And fabrics that have words or text is also a trend. So you can see that in both of these quilts or you know, tiny little black and white prints that have been come up, cut up and collaged. And also the influence of nature. You may recognize the quilt on the left is from a photo that went around social media. It was on Pinterest and all the other social media of the, the cute little mouse who had climbed to the top of a flower. And on the right, we have a, a kitty version of the green man. So the green man is a mythical character from Celtic mythology. And here we have the cat version of that, which I can appreciate. By the way, if any of you are cat lovers, um, I, I want to mention to you on Facebook, I have several groups, I have several pages, but one of them is Luana's Fabraholic Kitty Club. And that's for all of you who've been uh, kicked out of groups and had people unfriend you because you post too many cat memes. And you can come to our kitty club and post as many cat photos and memes and videos as you like, and nobody will get mad at you. Here are two different quilts that are using uh, combinations of warm colors and kind of a bright yellow green, but of course, very different techniques, expressing things from the fruit and vegetable world. And of course, a lot of people feel like the last few years have just been a dumpster fire. So this artist had to express that. And I thought that was kind of an amusing expression. I like how the, uh, the background stitching continues the story. So again, if you saw it at a distance, you might not fully comprehend what you were looking at until you got close and saw the, the swirling smoke up above the dumpster fire. A day in the life mid pandemic, you know, so many of us sought to document the feelings we were having and the things that we lost and the things that we found during the pandemic. So this is one artist's rendition of that. And another artist, you know, it's very stark graphic and simple block, but it certainly tells the story or it gives a message of what this artist intended. And I thought these were a couple interesting portraits. There are just so many interesting, creative, fabulous portraits out there. And I'm sure many of you are, are portrait artists as well. Uh, Kimberly Lacey, who's the artist on the left, her sister, Dana, was our customer service manager for years and years. She retired a few years ago. And I just thought, you know, one of the things we're seeing is traditional blocks that are being blown up and dissected and then put back into a quilt. Like gigantic stars that are being cut in half and sort of randomly pieced back into quilts. So that's a trend that we're seeing as well. So now we're going to Birmingham. Of course, this is not this year's show because it was not in person, or I should say last year's show. Last year, it was canceled. It is the largest show in Europe. And even though it's in the UK, uh, it attracts quilters and 
also uh, visitors from all over Europe, from Russia to Italy to Sweden, and of course, um, all of the UK. And I always go to the show and I always take photos, so I miss when I'm not able to go there. I have a, an exhibit that I curated that is going to Birmingham for the show, which opens the end of July. It is the show that was at the International Quilt Museum in Lincoln, Nebraska, called For the Love of Gaia, except none of us got to see it in person. So it will be traveling to Birmingham this year. I'm not sure if I'm going. I have a hotel reserve, but I don't have a flight. Uh, so we're getting down to the wire, but it will also be at the New England Quilt Museum in Lowell, Massachusetts, uh, starting in June through April of next year. So let's have a look at some of the quilts that were submitted and shown virtually for last year's Birmingham show. So we have a still life on the left, kind of an outdoor still life on the right. Incredibly intricate, uh, realistic image here by a Spanish artist whose work I admire. Here's another one of those horizontal landscape quilts. I, you know, I almost feel like quilters are making these almost like you would make, you know, you'd wanna look out your window and see this view. We couldn't travel to places like this, but we can make quilts that remind us of these places. And here's another seaside quilt, but a completely different view underneath a pier. Miniature tiny little quilt. It's always amazing to see these miniature quilts and try to imagine how they did it. I, I think the most amazing miniature quilts I've seen are at the Tokyo show. Uh, we can only hope that that show will come back in a different venue so we can see more of these miniature quilts. And uh, in Tokyo, they're framed. That's the only place I've ever seen miniature quilts framed. Here's an artist with two different Islamic themed quilts. And here's a view of women in India with their colorful saris. I'm sure you're aware of this, but African prints, imported large scale colorful African prints are having a moment. Actually for several years, they've been used by uh, designers, fashion designers in Europe and New York. And of course it has spread into the quilting world uh, we're finding that these prints are very popular for our fabric business, but they're also very difficult to source during the pandemic. But here's a quilt that was just made out of lots of these great big, you know, happy African quilt or African fabrics. Uh, this is another one. I want you to take a close look at the stitching in the background. It's pretty amazing. So from a distance, you would see the tree against a pale blue background. But when you come in close, you see there's a mountain landscape that has been stitched into the background. There's a concentric circle of an incredibly intricate mandala around the mountain landscape. And then you end up being even more mesmerized by the intricate mandala. And I'm sure you know that, you know, the, the Zen tangle thing and the mandala drawing trend, that's all over the internet. And this is how we see it expressed in the quilting world. Here are two different expressions of architecture. Uh, the one on the left was seeking to show all different kinds of architectural, uh, architectural uh, living buildings. 
So we see a yurt, uh, we see stone and wood and from all different uh, climates around the world. And on the right is a map and all the different architecture in that city in England. I believe it's in England. And I believe the one on the left was Warsaw. And then on the right is the Amalfi Coast in Italy. So both vertical architectural pieces, but completely different feeling. And I, I really appreciated the contrast in the one on the left with the, the older colorful buildings in the foreground, a little bit of the forest, and then the high rise and the construction cranes and the completely different color palette that was used in the background in the distance. And two completely different ways of expressing architecture, a very modern expression on the left from South Africa and a very uh, intricate stitched expression by a Korean artist on the right hand side of simply black thread on a white background. Two different expressions of images from within a church. And of course, two years ago, we had Notre Dame burning. And that, so this was kind of an ode to the architecture inside Notre Dame. And then on the right hand side is a stained glass window from, uh, from the Yorkshire Cathedral. And of course there were expressions of how people felt about the pandemic, about being in lockdown, about having to social distance. And we're gonna see a lot of this in Houston, I know there's at least one exhibit that will be covering this topic. Hashtags. <laughs> How many hashtags have you used during the pandemic to express how you're feeling? And that image of the little coronavirus, that little spiked uh, motif is going to be in art everywhere. And it's gonna be with us for a while. And two very evocative quilts about being alone. On the left, we have the little girl who has her beloved doggy to keep her company. And on the right, uh, this was, this quilt was specifically made by the artist to express the feeling of being alone. And then we have some animal portraits, wildlife portraits. So again, I'm just going to encourage you to come back and look at the recording and take a closer look at some of these. Uh, the piece on the right, I think is interesting because the feathers are echoed in the stitching in the background. So now we're going to the Mancuso Spring Quilt Festival. Just had a few things I wanted to show you from the spring more recently. And the thing that really struck me is the beautiful portraits and particularly group portraits. So, you know, here we are socially distanced, feeling alone. And we're, you know, as a group, we're creating these amazing group portraits and portraits about relationships. This is a family portrait. And, you know, if you're paying attention, you're gonna see a lot of these color themes and trends that are repeated. So there's the purple and orange again. That's a very personal 
quilt. It says so much just with the image, doesn't it? And again, capturing that feeling of being alone. Well, we had another quilt earlier on, you may recall, of the woman sitting at the window. I think that's a common feeling for many of us, being indoors and looking out. And these last two quilts, I think, are about our desire to return to travel, whether it's Hawaii or Cuba. Um, I, I really appreciate this one because I've been to Cuba and I, ha I know a lot of Cuban musicians. So that really captures the feeling of the, the music of the island. Now, steampunk has been a trend for quite a while. And I think this is capturing that. It's an interesting study of values, working with black and white and many different shades of gray. Here's a, a lovely nature quilt. And if you look up, you'll see the, the woodpecker perched up on the tree. So there are a lot of earth tones and just this little tiny flash of red on the head of the bird. But I think it's also interesting, the mix of techniques. We have the very artistic expression of the tree, very realistic expression on the randomly pieced background. And I mentioned earlier, Kimberly Lacey's, whose sister uh, used to be our customer service manager. Here's another one of her pieces. She lives here locally. And I, I love seeing these quilts where an image isn't distorted to make it look very three-dimensional. So this looks like a, a ball floating in space. <laughs> and here's that combination of purple and orange again. Purple with analogous warm colors really, but still it's that purple and orange. You know, I came across this image last night. I think that it belongs with this exhibit. I hope that I'm right, but I thought it was really quite an amazing image. But again, purple and orange, right? Uh, if you don't know about Sakwa yet, Studio Art Quilt Associates, um, I'm sorry that you've been living under a rock, but if you're a quilt artist, you really need to check out this amazing organization. It is the largest international organization of art quilters, and they have an annual conference. It was online this year, and it was hosted by the Australasia Group in Australia and New Zealand. And I'm just going to show you a, a few images from the conference uh, they will have a conference in person in Florida next year. I'm planning to go to that. If you've been to Houston, I'm sure you've seen their exhibit, but they have exhibits that they put on all over the world in all kinds of venues. But there are certainly artists who are making statements through SACWA as well. Uh, the quilt on the left, uh, this, so this is from the conference and the artists spoke about their work. The quilt on the left, Valerie spoke about the African burial ground that was discovered when they were excavating and building in lower Manhattan. And that history had been lost for a while, but now it's been reclaimed and it's been made into a national park, I believe. And of course, the, the trail of tears for our Native Americans. I think these stories now are being brought to the forward. In the past, they were covered up. And now the stories are coming out and we wanna hear those stories. We wanna understand what happened. And that's what this is about too. 
women of color. Every face has a story. We can only imagine. And I also wanna make sure that you know about the textile talks and also the Visions uh, Museum in San Diego has regular online talks, but the textile talks are every Wednesday and they have had such an amazing group of artists uh, sharing with us on different topics every week. And we've been a sponsor of that as well because we thought, well, I needed that for my mental health. <laughs> it's great to be able to go on and look at beautiful uh, textile art and hear artists talk about their work every week. I just thought this was brilliant, an overhead view of a Passover Seder table. So these are all from the textile talks and we get to visit artist studios, which is a lot of fun. And all of the artist talks have been recorded. So you can actually go and it, it, it's very easy to find, just look for a Sakwa textile talks and you can go through the library of recorded uh, events that are available to all of us for free. This is from another online talk. Maggie collects vintage embroidery pieces and remakes them. And some of her work is quite amazing <laughs> and unexpected. So there's no Tokyo Quilt Festival at the moment, but the Quilt Nihon is traveling. It was recently at the Rocky Mountain Quilt Museum. This was the first in-person quilt exhibit that I went to over the whole pandemic. And when I went to see these quilts in person, I wept. You know, when we all come together again in person to look at quilts together, I'm just warning you, keep some tissues in your pocket. It's an extremely emotional experience. But uh, this beautiful exhibit is traveling to several different venues so you can still see the amazing intricate work of these Japanese artists. So for those of you who are artists, there are a lot of things for us to think about that could go into our work. There are forces around us in nature that are growing more powerful and in some cases destructive that may affect us personally, or it may just be that we're thinking about what's happening on the planet and what do we want to do about that? What do we want to say about that? You know, we're going into hurricane season now. For those of you who live in that part of the country, these are the kind of images that you see in your news. These are the kind of colors that you see. Uh, last fall, we had terrible fires here in Colorado. They actually have started up again the last few days here. Uh, I-70 was closed down for a while because of a fire. These are images from the fire right here in Boulder where I live. And of course that coronavirus image, man, I, you know, I don't know what this image is going to, how it's going to be expressed through textile art, but I'm sure we're going to see more of it. And so many of you dropped what you were doing and made hundreds or even thousands of masks. I'm sure you're sick of making masks, but the images of these masks are going to be still with us for a while. And uh, this is kind of a funny thing. Dr. Fauci testified at a Senate hearing and he wore this mask and we immediately got requests for this fabric, which we were able to stock. And a lot of people bought it because they wanted to make the same mask that Dr. Fauci had on. So hopefully these kind of images will fade away. Hopefully we won't have to be thinking about these things again, but it is definitely, you know, it, it captures a period of time. I mean, the, 50 years from now, and when people look back at the history of what was happening at this time and look at the images that go with this 
once in a lifetime event. These are the kind of images that will come up. But, you know, whether you're talking about group quilts or street art, collaborative art is also a trend. And the colors that are coming out of collaborative art are something to pay attention to. You know, when you pass by these murals that are appearing in towns and cities all over the world, and it really is a phenomenon, it's a way for these artists to put bread on the table, uh, that businesses have hired them to make street art or to make murals on the side of their buildings. And in many cases, communities come together to create these artworks for their neighborhood. There are images of heroes from what we've gone through from the pandemic. There are very fascinating portraits, what we used to call graffiti and now we call it street art. Uh, this is a work in progress here in Boulder. It's completed now, but this polychromatic uh, treatment of colors on the face, it's all over the art world. We've seen it in the work of Bisa Butler, but check out this artist from Lagos in Nigeria and the work that he's doing. Look him up on Facebook. And I just wanted to share some of his work and his workspace with you in case you're not aware of him. And these are all fabric collages made with African prints. Pretty amazing stuff. So here are some trends to watch and I would suggest that you take a picture with your cell phone or screen capture. And this may give you kind of a jumping off point and of course, if you watch the recording, you can review this as well. And, you know, trends are not something that you should follow. It's just something to be aware of because often exhibits or projects come together because we're all feeling the same way, thinking about the same things, creating art under a same theme, and then all of our quilts or textile art suddenly come together in an exhibit or a project or an idea that's being expressed. So when I share trends with you, it's not a, well, you should be doing this and this is the thing to do. It's more like, huh, this is interesting how all these artists had the same idea at the same time. What does it mean? This is a piece that I made. I'll just tell you a quick little story for the, the Washington DC exhibit that will be in Houston next year, not this year, but next year. Uh, I sent the organizer, Donna DeSoto, a list of topics for this that I would be willing to do. I said, you know, I love DC so much. I go there twice a year because my brother lives there. And so she came back to me and uh, with my two topics and one of them was the White House. And I said, are you kidding? Nobody else chose the White House. And she said, well, I told everybody they can't do anything political and nobody wanted it. <laughs> so I took it and I just, you know, took the, the concept, the symbology of the White House, which is administrations come and go, but the White House represents something that is beyond any administration. So it's called sunrise, sunset, front door, back door. These are a few links that you can check out if you'd like to look at my photos from previous years when I actually went to shows and took photos. You can find me on Flickr.com. I think I have about 15,000 photos and I've had about 16 million visits. So apparently people like to look at those photos. Of course, we have a blog and a newsletter. eQuilter has 120,000 subscribers and I write a creative inspiration newsletter every week on Wednesday, and we have videos as well. And I'm sure those of you who are customers know that 2% of all sales go to charity. We've raised 1.8 million US dollars so far, and that money also goes towards uh, supporting nonprofits, museums, and galleries, and so on. And we love to support exhibits like Sacred Threads, for instance, where 
uh, quilters can express ideas and feelings, um, grief and loss and healing and brotherhood and peace and that whole range of feelings and have a place for their work to go and be shown and shared to the quilting and viewing community.